Today is Thursday, January 19, 2017, and this is a joint meeting of the Town Council and School Board Finance Committees. Uh, I'm joined with Peter Hayes, the Chair of the Town Council Finance Committee, and along with the both of us, we have Chris Gazzo from the Town Council Finance Committee, Carrie Lightford and Christine Massimo from the School Board Finance Committee, Julie Kuchenberger, Tom Hall, Lisa. Doris Crockett, Kate Bolton, Joanne Sizemore, and Tom Bayba. <coughs> Thank you. So we're going to jump right into old business and sort of go through some of the stuff that we did last year just to bring us all up to speed. Kate has handouts, hopefully, for all of us. Um, we'll review and reaffirm the norms. There's not many new people at the table, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, if anyone has any adjustments to them, feel free to speak up. I'm happy to read them for people at home. Um, and we'll also post these on our website. Uh, so the, the Joint Town Council and School Board Finance Committee norms. Meeting members will practice transparency and avoid hidden agendas, treat each other with dignity and respect, listen first to understand, to demonstrate respect, appreciation for the opinions and perspectives of others, respect the roles and unique responsibilities of the joint finance team members, to bring a sense of humor to the table. <laughs> and music, apparently. And music. <laughs> Just today. <laughs> um, <coughs> does anyone have any comments on those? Are there any adjustments to those? And are there any that we would like to add? Everyone seems okay to that. Okay. We need we don't vote or anything no, like that. Okay. And then the second thing that we'll review and reaffirm <laughs> are our favorite things to go after turn. You're gonna get your exercise today. I need to do my so, 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 so last year we developed um, a glossary of terms, and I think um, it was helpful for one for us <coughs> to know what we were all talking about. Education speak probably is a big part of that, um, but it's also helpful for the public to know the definitions of, of what we're talking about with regard to the budget, but also larger items throughout you know, the different. Group. So, uh, so I will not read these for all of you, <laughs> but we will put them on the website again. I, they will be on the budget portal that we started last year, and I think was um, appropriate. We'll put these on there, but there are four. I believe it's four at the end. Did you read four? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so there are four at the end. <laughs> Mr. Baybine has a couple to. Um, touch upon, and then Tom or Julie, for some reason we didn't have essential programs and services in there, which seemed interesting to me. I had two different versions and neither one of them had a definition, so um, I put that under Tom or Julie, and then we also have cost of living um, expense, which I'm happy to take on, if there aren't any volunteers. Unless Mr. Dave, I want three. I'd be happy to. Awesome. Thank you. Let me get different results. <laughs> Does it make sense to incorporate uh, the final list or the working list, whatever we're going to refer to as part of the budget document as well? Put it in the sure. That would present publicly? Yeah. Okay. In, the, in the budget book, there's that nice little um, section at the very back that has supporting documents that might right. be a good spot. Yep. That was our goal to try to get it in last year. For so I think it's important as we, we obviously can, you don't have to come up with any others that you think need to be in here, but as this is a living document, so as things come up, there may be more terms that we want to make sure we get in there. Um, we obviously don't want it overwhelming, but there may be some that we've forgotten. And it is a Google Doc for the communication <laughs> side the of the, <laughs> the house. Um, but I can also email it out in a Word document for those of you who don't have Google Docs. 
that I'm just looking at there. Compatible IT across the town. Google Docs. You got to get on by first. That's right. So thank you, Sean. Moving on to new business. Review and approve proposed budget adoption schedule. Do you want to put in the past? I just said to Tom, I need to get my steps in. <laughs> and this is a day of sitting and eating all day. I don't mind running around the room. So this well, calendar will, oh, go ahead. Well, she's passing out to ask a question. Of course. And I apologize for coming in a little late. I just want to make sure that I haven't been adopted by a Super Hainsworth family and that the name on the invitee list has changed to Sean Baybine. Right. On the what list? The invitee. The agenda. <laughs> 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 Not that I don't like the agenda. I have a question. You were going to. I thought you were going to. I was going to say, he's a little bit busy now doing a, re, uh, a reunion of Will and Grace, but I want to make sure I wasn't adopted uh, without knowing about it. I was going to ask for a couple. I was going to ask for an allowance. <laughs> my, my apologies. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> Thank you for that correction. Another reason someone else should do the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> they just mount. Beyond, but I don't know who's here, so I feel like this is covered. <laughs> um, so the budget calendar will look very similar to what you've seen in the past. <clears throat> Kenny, do you want me to um, explain why there's a, a new little shiny red thing on there? Uh, yes, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I just thought it would be fun to throw some random colors on the calendar. Um, just to take a step back, what we did was we took a look at what uh, was on the calendar last year for our joint meetings and the public meetings and the things that we did um, as a group with this team, and we basically took everything and moved it forward to that same date in the current year. There were a couple of places where that didn't work very well. Um, the February school vacation is a different week this year from mm -hmm. what it was last year uh, because of the way the holidays fall. So um, we shifted the dates in February. In March, we would have had our uh, meetings this year on the 9th and the 23rd, but because we have our community dialogue on the school side on the 9th, um, that's already been scheduled. We shifted that to the 2nd and the 16th. And the reason that the second is all fancy in red is that um, you'll see a note down on your right-hand column. There's a room conflict with this space on March 2nd that was already booked for a large training. And um, so the alternatives are many. We could say, let's move our smaller group into a different venue. Let's reschedule the March 2nd meeting to a time when we can have this space or let's decide that we don't need two meetings in March because we don't have a lot to dive into yet. I mean, I, I can see that, that there's plenty for us to talk about, so I'm not sure whether um, a cancellation is, is a good idea at that point, assuming that we don't have the, the actual budget document to talk about. Um, but that's why it's red. It's a point of discussion, and uh, we certainly need to make a decision. All of the other dates that are on here, um, Colette or uh, Kelly have already secured space for us here or wherever the appropriate location is for meeting. Look at that. I've created silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to do in this room. Uh, I know. Processing. Thinking um, <coughs> hard. I personally hesitate to cancel it um, <coughs> because we've already sort of reduced the number in January and February to one meeting of the joint group. Mm -hmm. um, that's not to say that, you know, after our February meeting, we might say we really only need one. Right. So I guess I would prefer that we find an alternative location, at least for the second, and then after or at the meeting on the ninth, we can decide whether we do need to have that. Yeah. Well, and we're we're a pretty tidy sized group. We're a dozen people, I think. Um, so. We could probably fit in the town manager's conference room fairly comfortably. We could uh, presumably fit upstairs. So I think you know if that's if that's the will of the team, then we can find an alternate spot. The only thing I would notice, um, I think, there's some value in having these taped and, and broadcast. Right. So there's some limitations yeah. as to which space should be used to facilitate that part. 
And actually, I think, um, although not maybe applicable to the school board, I believe our town council rules or maybe ordinance says that um, the town council's finance, work on the town council's finance committee has to be published, even though this is a workshop, because we are a majority of the whole council. I think that we need to at least tape it wherever we are, you know, so for future showing, just to be in compliance with any critics. Do we not have portable cameras? <coughs> yeah, we can still tape it. Yeah. Uh, we just can't broadcast live, because that's an important feature. Are we broadcasting live now? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, um, I know we have the capacity to bring mobile camera stuff into various <coughs> rooms. Um, I don't. I don't see the necessity to have live broadcast as long as there's a public yeah, record of it that's recorded. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it gets replayed on community <laughs> TV at some point uh, in the rotation. I think we should. Yeah. We should meet our obligation. I think with that, right? Just from experience, certainly video, capturing the video is easy enough. Um, the audio is sometimes a challenge. Can uh, be a little. The real funky. benefit in having it in this space is that the yeah. audio is good. Yeah. Um, but. Well, we, we also could change the date and we could say, well, you know, for that particular meeting, we're going to have it on Wednesday or Friday. So um, it depends on which is more of a hardship for people to try and rebook a time that's been set aside or... I'd prefer to keep the date and time and just change the venue <coughs> address, but it's just my personal preference. I agree. I like that. Too. Sounds like I'm seeing a lot of nodding on yeah. keeping March 2nd and then just finding an alternate place to do it so <coughs> and making sure we can record. Where? I may look at the library space as well. Oh, yeah. so oh that's a great space. idea. Yeah. <coughs> Good. We'll find a new space and make you aware of what that is. Perfect. <coughs> um, and so were there any other things that stood out, Kate? I'm trying to think. April 26th is the budget forum, <coughs> which we're going to get to further Yeah, that's, that's one of our agenda items, um, and actually that's another place where I spoke with Kelly this morning. We haven't really, um, we haven't officially secured the space for that. That's the one thing that's sort of in an odd place because we were having some conversations in our small finance committee about, um, you know, was that the right venue? Were we, is it appropriate? Is it... Right, and the pros and cons going around. Um, so yeah, the, the budget forum at the high school is going to be a topic all by itself and how that gets organized and, and where that is. Um, and then the other ones, the other meetings are either um, school board or town council schedule driven meetings. We do have uh, the school budget workshop, which is a school leadership council workshop put on for the school board. I say school one more time, I'll win yeah. a prize. Um, that's on, Feb on uh, April 7th. And uh, as always, we love it if town councilors can come to that. Um, I think that you know, we've had folks be able to attend that. Um, that's the one that's a round table and the leadership council, which is the school principals and the central office leadership team, will kind of go around the room, give a little state of the state kind of presentation in the context of, you know, where are we now and what are we asking for in the budget, and it's an opportunity for the school board to really dig deep a little bit, find out where are the challenges, what is it that we're asking for, what are the resources that we're looking for. Um, and I think, you know, I know that a number of people at this table have been to that, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's, uh, it's of value. Certainly the, the board, I think, appreciates it, and the leadership council appreciates the opportunity to be able to reach out and tell folks what's really going on down in the trenches. Um, Jody, is there anything else on here that's peculiar? I guess we could say that the meeting on the 10th of May, that's an off-schedule meeting, the Joint Town Council, Count <coughs> Boy, I really can't talk today, Town Council School Board Budget Workshop um, is, is in the middle week between our two formal um, Council and, and board meetings, and, and that's, that's that's typical. We uh, though the council could hold they have to hold a public hearing before they take second reading. They typically separate it the two, so we try to fit it in that middle week. Yeah, and that I think again was an opportunity for us all to sit together and ask questions and you know air any concerns. Um, be able to go a little bit deeper than you do in just a budget presentation. So um, again, I think that's something that we've really found to be valuable. 
get everybody at the table together. By that time, I think this smaller team is usually sort of, yeah, we get it. Um, <laughs> but it's an opportunity for the other counselors and the other school board members um, who haven't really been digging in quite as deeply as we have to uh, to ask their questions and to be brought up to date. So can I ask a qualifying question? <clears throat> so uh, I know later we're talking about the drivers, which will, um, in essence, um, shape the conversation uh, as far as what we're looking at going forward. So one of the just to share one of the comments that the councils received at the finance committee level was uh, from one citizen was. Uh, questioning why we needed to have so many meetings and I, I was a little surprised uh, given the comment um, because they focused on the fact that per law and um, even our own ordinances um, the council does not participate in the allocation of funding or this the uses of those funds it's purely a net basis so keeping that in mind having seven meetings there's also one meeting in here that's not listed, which would be the night that the town council's finance committee meeting would have the invite the school board or the superintendent to present um, the budget to the finance committee. There's that formal process where, um, unfortunately, it's literally you sit on one side of the table, we sit up there, and then it's presented to the public as part of a, as a department of the entire town. So I don't know where that's going to fit. Um, yeah, that's it. The, so I just want to keep that in mind because it's usually so our council finance committee meetings are I already forgot we had one last week Tuesday Thursday Thursday sorry <coughs> so I just want to make sure so there's a, there's a, an eighth one that's going to be in there too yeah you're right Sean on one of my calendars <laughs> the 700 I have here um, I have on Thursday April 13 at 2 p.m. I think that was based on the sheet that. Uh, Colette had, or she was kind of doing the same thing that I was doing, just taking last year's review calendar yep. and shoving it ahead. I'm looking to see if I actually have that, but um, she had kind of laid out how the Town Council Finance Committee's review dates would look if they were replicating last year's so the question, schedule. The question you received is why do why do the school board and town council finance committees meet yeah. so often? So oh. not, not necessarily, it wasn't, by the way, it was a question, it was a comment suggesting that because of the authority that is given to the council, or the limited authority, is it really necessary for us to have that many meetings? Um, and so we all um, opined and said, you know, uh, this is what kind of caused it, so forth, and I'm not going to go down that path. Um, I just wanted to bring up really, um, one, I mean, there's already seven meetings, but there's really an eighth one that's in here as well because it's the formal presentation of the superintendent to the finance committee um, as a department that's outside of this informal right. process. And yeah. I would suggest, just because of memory, um, last year we had the budget was presented on the 1st of April. Mm -hmm. This year is the 5th, so we do lose a little bit of time. So that means that the, we're going to be presented the, the budget at the town council meeting on the 5th which means that the Finance Committee wouldn't even be able to begin its planning until the 6th, Peter, which means the 13th would be a little quick to have a discussion that early about one de particular department without, you see what I'm saying? So it might have to be pushed out maybe a week or so. Yeah. But I think Peter, I think the Finance Committee needs to look at this the sequence as quickly to yeah. give everyone here a chance to know when that's going to happen. Right. As I'm looking at, at my notes on here, Sean, I see that the, mm. on the 13th we have to sort of, it just says joint meeting. Right. Um, the notes that I have on another form is, would be that that could serve as the finance yep. town council's formal review, but that obviously could be pushed out or changed depending on what your, right. your whole as department well as the time. review schedule looks like. So it was more informational to, to ask Peter to kind of look at that because we'll need to co uh, coordinate that with you to make sure it's... Well, the normal process is the month of April is when the town's finance committee really kind of digs deep and we put together a tentative schedule and oh, okay. folks some, some slots. In fact, I have the school uh, schedule for the Thursday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, so that's, really where, that's where I got that. Yeah. To meet the needs of the town's finance committee, those meetings will be held from 6 to 8 in the evening. Yeah. So now that I think about it, Kate, I think actually maybe we might have started this where we did to have a joint session before the actual presentation during the day, mm -hmm. way back when we first started. I mean, this is th yeah. year three. 
Well, well, I just want to make sure, because, um, uh, so I'll complain about the 2 o'clock meeting, but so this is 2 to 3 for a workshop, and then we're doing 6.30 to 7 for the formal presentation, so just, that's why I'm bringing it up. Well, the, the difference being the town's finance committee yes. is 6 to 8 at night for all of its work, including budget review. I think it's a point for some discussion. The joint finance committee traditionally has been meeting mid-afternoon at this point, at this time. I know yeah. that's inconvenient for Sean. Yeah. Whether we continue to is probably a point yeah. that ought to be talked about and decided today. Right, and I think, because I know last year we did that presentation and that was also <coughs> fairly early or late afternoon. Yeah, so I, maybe think, I think we kind of were the sort of this folding this the two together. Things are different. I think we folded the, the two together <laughs> and we said this is our workshop for this week. Yeah, which um, but then that would mean that on the 13th, if that's in fact the date that we're scheduling, that we would need to have the right time on our calendar. Right, and we wouldn't have this We wouldn't meeting. have the 2 o'clock meeting. Wouldn't so that's what I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we would not have this meeting. <laughs> Jody, if you remember, it was you, George, and Donna were at the, and sat at the table right. for but the presentation. But we didn't have this meeting. Yeah, that's what right. I meant. Yeah. 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 I like you guys. I don't want to meet twice. Uh -huh. Finances. We're good. We're talking about dropping the two o'clock on the thirteenth. So on the thirteenth, uh, instead of two o'clock to three thirty, yeah. I'm going to make a note that it's six thirty. It's the town council's formal review, and it's six thirty. Yeah, our meeting starts at six. But right, but six to six thirty is MIS. I'm just going to give them an hour. Oh, you're giving us an hour. Yep. I mean, I, I, I think by, by that point, um, we've had enough meetings here jointly to, yeah. to kind of hash out what to expect. I would assume it's not like we're, I doubt we'll see any surprises. I hope we won't. I'm sure we won't. But, um, you know, that, I think the, the preliminary meeting before it was just to kind of make sure we had everything ironed out in there. It was a, yeah. kind of a smooth presentation. I think I'm not, I personally not overly concerned with that. I think yeah. by the time we get to that point, we should be well versed in what the challenges are going to be. With that. Yeah, and I and I know we had sort of prepared these calendars ahead. It's easier to cancel a, a cancel a yeah. meeting than yeah. it is to try to find a time for all twelve folks to meet. So I think we slotted in those times just to make sure we had a space. Yeah. So I'm hearing that I should edit the entry for April 13. It's still a joint meeting, but it is the Town Council Finance Committee's formal review meeting yes. and it's their <laughs> obligation yes. in the budget process. And it's not at 2 o'clock, it's at 6.30 for this group. Well, and it's just, it will just be Julie, you and I. Um, do you, with and, it's, and the chair, whoever you like, and, and your chair, if you'd like. Yep. That's up to you and who would. I'm just saying, it's not a six. It's not. <laughs> <right. Yes. laughs> Unless you really want to be. There. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a new label for it that says something besides joint finance committee meeting because that's not really what it is. Yeah. But we're just using that. Yeah, we're using budget. that time uh, time slot. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, were there any other items on here that need to be? <coughs> Shifted or adjusted. adjusted. I think apart from the budget form, which again we're supposed to ta tackle as a separate. Uh, yeah, and I was looking at the agenda, and it looks like we have that as sort of an overview of upcoming meetings, topics for upcoming meetings. But it may be worth sort of just touching upon um, sure. today. Yeah, kick around some ideas. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So discussion on communications mm -hmm. and the budget portal and how we sort of felt that went last year. I think we all agree that the budget portal was more convenient for people and that mm -hmm. everything lived in one spot. Um, but we continue to talk about communication and how we get <coughs> what we know out to the public so they, they know it and understand it um, easily. Yeah, and I think as, as we had sat down and talked and, and we kind of recognized it's certainly a need of a town council. There's going to be an effort around communication. How do we get the message out to everybody? What are the different ways of doing it? And I think you had shared, you know, a similar issue. How to, you know, with Facebook and all the different mechanisms, whether there's a way, again, as we try to tell one story about one budget, does that create some real opportunities for us to kind of share in some way that communication process? What's the messaging? What's the vehicle? So I think, you know, that was sort of the intent to see what everybody thought about. Is there a need for that? Is it something we should spend some time <coughs> trying to flesh out what it should look like? And I think that was sort of the genesis of I know. The I was trying to think back of what we what we discussed on communication, but I 
Yeah, I was just to say, we had a scanning agenda item at the very end, the meeting recap, the takeaways and to do's. I yeah. think that might be a, an opportunity after each of these meetings to say, you know, is there something we talked about that we ought to be sharing? Uh, whether it's notifying of an upcoming meeting or what have you. So if we be mindful and have that conversation on a consistent basis, uh, it's not always intuitive to me what you think is important that other people know. Uh, so I think if we can talk about it as a group, that would be far more helpful. <coughs> I, I think from a social media platform too, instead of using that to message, I think we use that to direct to the budget pool. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Instead mm -hmm. of saying, you know, here's our Facebook post and here's the discussion of it, the Facebook post is simply, listen, for details on the budget, go to the budget mm -hmm. portal. Mm -hmm. And it might be, it might, that message might be better served around a particular point of interest uh, rather right. than like Absolutely. a constant, constant message. Um, go back to look for budget information if there's something that really we want to drive people back to. Sure. Right. Let's use that opportunity sparingly um, <coughs> and when needed all the time. And we talked about um, different forms of communication. We talked about trying to um, maybe use papers more or is there, um, did we talk about community TV? We didn't. I was just. Gonna, I was just thinking the same thing. I think we should do something because you can always do a slide that just simply gets repeated. Because they have these, you know, they they right, transition through that has now. You don't want to put too much information. There's some of those slides. I'm like, you need a and it lasts like 10 seconds, and you need a magnifying glass. So <laughs> right. you have to be uh, cognizant of that. But you know, maybe have a couple of slides. One has the schedule in it. You know, key parts of the schedule, yeah. or maybe just the budget portal site. Um, you know, tagline or whatever you want to call it. Maybe do something around that and then have it on, you know, cable TV. Mm. Even one of those, um, <coughs> there was that real nice little one page summary sheet that uh, Karen put together for us last year as a handout. And, you know, it was colorful. It was like, you know, here's your budget all in one, one page with some charts and something as simple as that yeah, could um, actually be discernible on, uh, on a TV scroll. Yeah. So I was looking more at communicating where people can find resources and not necessarily data. Um, I don't think it would be necessarily appropriate because there's a <coughs> larger context of the data that's in a graph, even if it's pretty. And um, I'll, but I'm, t I'm talking more, you know, in a, um, the public hearing is on this date, or the, uh, the first reading is on this date, and that's all that's on there. And this, the public hearing or the public forum um, that we're going to have is on this date. Uh, questions, um, send your questions to. Jody Shea mm -hmm. at SkywardSchools.com. Mm -hmm. You know, some, you know what I'm talking about? Something right. more like that rather than, you know, we can, after the fact, there's always the, after the fact that once it's passed, then we might follow up and take that stuff down and put up. Here are the results and what got passed at high level. Right. And again, a link to the portal for, for the full budget yep. if people want to dig that deep. I like the idea of even promoting these live meeting so that yeah, folks exactly. could be watching them at home if it's convenient or accessing it at a later time. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So do you want to have, I'm just going to put those together. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the challenge with this group. Who's doing the work? Chris, are you able to give some thought to that and maybe we can report back with some suggested pieces that uh, would be good for that venue? And I'm, and yeah, and I'm happy to um, like help you come up with, since it's only going to be three or four slides, I think. Yeah. Do we just um, make them in PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also, and this, I think it's the right time to mention, so Tom and I had talked a couple of weeks ago about one of my roles being to try to communicate budget things kind okay. of clearly. So okay. I have sent out um, kind of, hey, I'm available if you want to talk to me to the Lions Club and um, Rotary the over 55 luncheon I'm attending next <laughs> Monday. The library is providing me with a table and a coffee pot for a listening hour, and I've been invited to story time to hang out with <coughs> parents while their yeah. child is listening to stories. So um, I can provide you guys with feedback. I'm really that's going great. to listen. How do you want to be told about the budget? How are you looking for us to engage with you? Uh, and I can great. report back on things people have said. Oh, awesome. nice. That's great. That's helpful. <coughs> yeah, that, that might really appeal to some ideas about <coughs> where the gaps are, <coughs> what we can do. And yeah, an assessment of how they're already engaging and what they would how they would prefer to engage. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Because I mean, I think we all know there are certain ways that we get our information versus the way you get your information. So I think you're probably going to end up hearing a variety of ways. But if sort of a trend emerges 
that can help us sort of direct our, yeah. our focus rather than just trying to react. You can be like the president and tweet it. I could be. <laughs> no, 140 no. characters. No. <laughs> We're not trying to get it. We can't even get Google Docs. <laughs> I think that, you know, if we stick to the idea that we're trying to capture people's attention and not trying to throw a huge amount of content, as Sean was saying, you know, if you could put it on Facebook, you could tweet, you could um, post it on the website, you can send out a flyer, all, if all of those things say, hey, there's stuff going on that you need to pay attention to and then directs them to a good, safe, central place to find that, then you know we're we're doing the outreach without having to build content for every platform. Right. Right. Yeah. These different people are going to want different information. Right. You might even <laughs> simple things like budget questions. Check the portal. Still questions. Call. Joe. Call oh, Sean. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But one thought that's Sean Hayes. That, that's kind of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean Hayes. You know, but that that kind of assumes people are going to come. That's <laughs> sure. But, but you know, one thought is, and we had this last year. I mean, our past has been, our challenge has been. We go through this, this we're a mess in this process. Then we have this short period of time, and we have to try to then communicate and tell a story and get everybody on board. And that really gets collapsed into a small period of time. Is this an opportunity? And I, and I think you kind of touched on it. If we were to <coughs> just report out sort of the highlights of this meeting, so that there's kind of building sort of the story about things we've talked about and things that are happening, maybe cost drivers is a good thing to talk about. So it kind of just sets the expectation. So by the time we get there, at least the people that are, you know, that are really <coughs> interested in this have been kind of brought along. So I don't know if there is value to that, that we do push some stuff out in some way. And, you know, I understand it can't be too much, but I, but I think that's a real opportunity. I, I think just for the sake of, I mean, again, you don't want to overwork the staff with constantly having to create a slide of the week or something well, like that. Yeah, but I, I, I think, you know, I think that's that's uh, perfect for our budget portal because that's just a website, right? I mean, it's a web page basically. We can put all kinds of different yeah, information yeah. there. It doesn't have to be just a PowerPoint link or whatever. Yeah. I, I think that I'm almost kind of looking at the, it's a general marketing campaign, right? Getting people yeah. to say, yeah. you know, hey, if you want to engage in, instead of, you know, the, pa the challenge we've had in the past of one camp over here saying one thing and one camp here saying something right. and a third saying completely different. Here's, here's the central point for all the data and information. That should, that should hopefully start the discussion. I don't, I don't want it to end the discussion, but, you know, look at that, you know, but <coughs> the same, we always run into the how much information are you required or responsible for giving people and, and when and how. If we dump everything onto that one side and say, you know, go there and look at it. And if you still have questions, obviously we're all available yeah. or somebody's available. Um, I just worry about, you know, overtaxing. It's not a problem to create a, a, a slide every week, but add that to 20 other things or something that's going on, and then keeping up with it and that kind of stuff. So, does the, I know the I know the answer to this. Does the town council have a communication group? Like, who does your Facebook posting? Maybe it doesn't need to be. You don't have to tell me the person if you don't have to the person. But if, like, I think we all know we're meeting here today. But to Peter's point. A lot of other people don't, and so mm -hmm. if, if that's even the first sort of post, it doesn't have to be crazy where yeah, right. we're going into depth of detail, but hey, we're kicking off the budget season, we've had our first joint meeting, and, and here's our schedule. Or yeah. here's I'm even thinking just the quick, and what's nice about Twitter is that you only have 140 characters to <laughs> say what was the point. So today, I think, right now, if I were to like send out a tweet, it would be like, Joint budget committee focuses on improving communication. Like that's kind of the takeaway. Right, that's, right. that's what's nice about it is that it's quick, it's digestible. Because the budget portal is awesome, but it's also overwhelming yeah. um, for the average community member. Yeah. Well, and so it also requires that right. that person go and find it. Yeah. Where the, I mean, what we struggle <coughs> with, we we're challenged with creating all this fabulous data, making it available in one place, and then having people, how do we let them know it's there and so engage them to the point where they want to go find it? I think a couple things. I mean, you know, Twitter's great for that. The challenge we're going to run into is not everybody towns on Twitter. Right. So we have to reach across multiple platforms in multiple right, right. ways. Um, and not everybody's on the Internet either. Not everybody's watching the TV. You know, that's why we, we really struggled, I think, with getting the right mix of medium out there so that we can cover the most people. Um, and, and I think... Um, 
you know, I, I, I think it's great to have that messaging up there. I'm just always concerned about, um, I, I like the, the narrative kind of budget we have where you can start out reading the paragraph and understand the concept of it. Mm -hmm. And if people want to get down further into it, they certainly have the option to start digging in. But even if we use that similar format on the budget portal and just say, hey, here's, here's our, it's almost like rough drafting the, the, the budget itself before we plug the numbers in and say, here's our, we, we're developing the narrative as we need. Here are the budget drivers, mm -hmm. you know, and a little explanation, put that up on the budget portal. And then you can tweet out and say, hey, you know, just finished up looking at cost drivers today. Check out the budget portal. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and then we can throw a Facebook post out like that and say, hey, you know, great meeting today, whatever, you know, check out the, inf the new info at the budget portal. And then if people want to, you get that big picture, if they want to start digging in, they have links there, they have the ability to kind of go in, but, but at least it's the same, we don't have to worry about maybe, you know, the telephone game, right, where each different medium kind of loses maybe the key aspect or something, or by the time it gets to mm -hmm. Twitter, it's different than Facebook, it's different than we send to the leader or something like that. Yeah, I love the idea of tagging it and directing people. Yeah. <coughs> so, so two questions. <coughs> On your question, what's the town council doing? Uh, a committee, Kate Clear is chair, is just starting up around communication. So that's starting up. So it would be really good for us to plug into that and maybe think about how they're going to do it and say this is a need to and see where that goes. The second sort of link would be these meetings you described, are they in the next couple of weeks that you're going to do? Um, yeah, I, listen, when I've so been offering, my, I mean, I have not said, hey, please schedule me. I said, yeah, I'd love to come to this if you're interested. Okay, yeah. so I'm waiting to hear back, but I've let people know that really February would be the right month Great. to find out how people want to be communicated with, because at that point, um, past that point, we are actually in the nitty gritty of, of, of meeting to communicate. So I'm hoping by the end of February to have met with everyone that wants to let me hear them. So, so for part of this, that feedback might be really helpful for us to kind of put mm -hmm. some, some wheels on what we're talking about and try to, and maybe you'll have some great mm -hmm. ideas about how to what are the vehicles, what's the way to do it, what's the teasers, and how do we get it out there that, that kind of... Yep. Certainly by the March 2nd meeting, I would hope that I had That's met with everyone that was there. <coughs> Jody, I did want to mention, so for social media purposes, our Facebook and social media accounts, or whatever is out there, other than it's actually managed by staff. So it's not something that a council member would be updating. So uh, I don't know, do you guys do that, or does your staff do that? We have a school board. Um, yeah, so... Like Julie has a superintendent Facebook page. Right, um, then you have, they then there is a school have a board one, and you have to So right now the town's Facebook page is actually updated by Larissa, and then I think there's yeah. four other designees. So <coughs> for now, um, we need to kind of keep in mind that it can't be as immediate uh, because they work uh, within a time frame. So if something happens after hours, we wouldn't be able to post it until the next business day or whatever. Well, there's no reason why we couldn't share posts, right? I mean, right. Mm -hmm. like we'll we post something out. Yeah, I'm right. yeah. yeah. just saying it's part of the actually posted on the same. Yeah, common message, same right. information going out. And vice versa, if we put something up, we'll give it. Yeah. 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 You wouldn't yeah. want to have multiple posts of the same. That's right. probably worse than not posting at all. Right. It's going to get annoying. Turn you out. Right. I'll start following the school board filter. Anything else on that. communication? <laughs> um, I don't know if this falls in this category, but I did bring the copies of the, I guess this is probably further down, the, the budget forum questions mm. and answers. Um, because we actually have sort of archived here two years worth of things that, that the community was asking about. Um, and uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not sure where it fits into the conversation, but I think that we were thinking when we were talking last week that it might be a starting point for us to say, well, these are the topics that were real hot and people were interested in these things. So maybe we ought to put those on so our list again for this. Let's year. do the budget forum discussion after budget drivers. Let's get through C, and then D was overview of topics for upcoming meetings. So let's move the budget forms, format, and details to D. Okay. Yeah. So on, are we still on closing out communications? Yeah, I sure. So what I wanted to ask was, um, so to me communications is two levels. One is somewhat uh, factual. So, um, you know, town council's meeting, or town, uh, joint meeting of the uh, joint meeting of the school board and town council to talk about communications to me a factual statement. Then there's really the mission message or the mission kind of uh, statement. 
So the past couple of years, when you and I worked together, or all of us, at least in our public hearings, we talked about this three, five, seven plan, one budget. Um, to me, those are message statements rather than, you know, kind of like what we're doing for work. And so I was wondering if there could be some conversation about is that an appropriate continuation for us this year? Um, and how should we, you know, do, what type of an agreement do we need to come to about that message for both, of, both, you know, both groups? Um, so. Yeah, I think, and I, I don't want to speak for Peter, but I think when we met with Tom and Julie, we talked about one budget, one town, one budget. That came up quite a bit, and I think that may have been how it sparked communication. Instead of us all yeah. trying to create the wheel, let's work together and, and have the message that we're not all just trying to get as much information out there as possible. It's actually a message. Um, so yeah, I, I think that continues on. Um, do, you, do you think there's value in, and again, I don't, don't want to hype it or market it too much, but is there value in having a, a, a slogan or tag this year? Because it's, it's kind of like, you know, save our schools. After a while, we're just like, oh, what is really this, you know, you kind of, you get to a point where it's, you just repeat the same message over again and it kind of loses its, its resonance with people. I mean, I like the one budget. I think that's a very accurate description of what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I'm okay with continuing that. I just I don't want to get kind of the point where it gets stale or something, and people are just like, well, I get the same thing all the time. You know, is it worth coming up with um, an issue this year um, that's kind of the, the main budget driver for us? Whether it's you know last year it was um, uh, you know a reduced funding for for the state, you know, and are we going to get to the to zero you know, receivership or something? You know, do we want to pick an issue or or one thing and it really kind of say that's really what we're what what our main driver is. Pick a main driver or something and build a message around that. I, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not I think I think Chuck's point is I trying to build it. continuity year over year, and instead of one budget, is, is that mission statement. Yep, we're all in this together. And, yeah. and I feel like it's only been one year of that sort of slogan. I hate the word slogan. It was unofficial, I think, in year one. Last year, it became part of our presentations. So, but, but both are hitting it on exactly where I wanted to take it, and that is that um, I look at this year as, um, so it's year three, and what we originally started out is talking about is let's set up a precedent on how we relate to each other as well as the data and the facts and the glossaries and things like that. So this year to me is a continuation of last year um, and keeping the promises that we made in the process around school funding as well as in the municipal side because it's that three-year mark. And for us on the council side, we were talking about after we've set up those norms and the standards for the three years, we can at least move the council's finance committee to let's start doing predictive um, kind of assessments or metrics and you know how do we plan for the future. Um, and then this, the last two years will become looking back and did we make the right predictions and the right that type of stuff. So um, you're both right. I, I, wanted, I'm, I was kind of leading it towards I'm hoping that we continue this uh, process of sustainability, you know, all the way across everything that we do, communication, yeah, and I think tax rate. Right. I think, you know, eventually that motto or slogan yep. will get stale. But I think, in my opinion, is we still are creating that and working yep. towards that. Yeah, I think I think two really important points come out of this, and I think yeah, and maybe we should have. I mean, we kind of met. We we kind of actually agree that you know it seemed to work last year we should build on it and move forward but we did want to check back make sure everybody else is what agrees with that assessment that it that that is the right model and then two as we talked about communication Sean you know that three five seven we use it but it, but I bet and, and as we think about themes or things to communicate I'm pretty sure that most of our audience doesn't understand really what we're talking about so that's a huge opportunity to really tell that common story about what it is we're trying to do and so that I mean if we wanted something to start talking about so to get to your point Chris I think it may get stale at some point yeah. but I don't think we've really imprinted that yeah. yet yeah. To, to folks out there so they can say yeah I get it I really understand what they're trying to do because I, I still think right. even, even by the questions we got yeah. they're, they're still kind of in these pockets of, of silos you know, the question we got about why you're meeting so much and what are you really accomplishing? And I think, you know, you, both of you answered it. It was about sort of relationships and what we're trying to yeah. do and it's the greater sort of mission. 
but, but as we think about a theme that we can start communicating, I think that'd be really powerful. So I, I it plays last, to your point. Last year, the only mention of the 3517, which is something that we kind of, year one, when Christina and I were chairs, we started it, but didn't really put formality to it. Jody and I put formality to it, and so there's a continuation. Um, last year, we only mentioned it as part of the public hearing, and then there was the wrong. Yeah. What yeah. is 3517? Huh? Can you explain that? Yeah, uh, it's uh, simple. So um, we kind of agreed that we would take three years to establish the norms, understand the data, and understand where we really are in the providing of services. In essence, um, starting at ground zero through now almost three years ago, and then building on it. It didn't matter what happened before that, whether it was the tax rate, actual spending, where are we actually today, and then let's move that forward. Three years to look at that data. The next two years after that is after we've established it, it was to establish, set up metrics. That's why there was such a big focus last year about asking the school department for the metrics that George came up with, because uh, we're doing the same on the schools. You know, what are the metrics to then solidify that and then use those metrics to drive <coughs> longer term planning from a, from a global uh, enterprise kind of perspective, not down at the program level. So such as total spending for education. For us, it would be total spending for education. It's not spending for K2 versus K5, you know, you know, all the different mm -hmm. ones. And then in the last two years is to then use that um, two-year period and go back and say, did we make the, did we define the metrics properly? Did we use the right metrics? And um, how can we, you know, basically correct errors and make new adjustments and keep continue moving mm -hmm. it forward? And if I recall, I think the goal was to, do, to try and be a little bit as, as predictive as possible and have some, as much stability as possible. Um, a lot of things are beyond our control with the state in terms of how they, you know, dictate funding and things like that. But you know, communicating things like you know, in the three to five years we're going to be looking at X. Doesn't mean we're necessarily going to act on that and put that right. at the top of the queue. But it's it starts the discussion early enough so that by the time we get to year three, we've already kind of been a little bit acclimated to and we can start getting into more of the detailed discussions in terms instead of having a why are we doing this now or mm -hmm. why is this so important now. Right. We've kind of built up to that point and then we can start moving into the details. And that helps us, I think, as a municipality to couch between school resources and needs and municipal resources and needs and how do we plan and stagger all that stuff out to basically control our, our, our debt and our, our bond and stuff. That's, that's, really kind of, that's really kind of I think what spurred from from my perspective what kind of spurred our attempt to, to do this to really kind of get a handle on what's the right metrics, when is the right time, um, the need is there, sure, but when is the right time coupled financially to do that, how do you plan for that, how do we execute that? You know, I, for me, uh, an example of a, a great opportunity for us to demonstrate that and probably good ground for this group to cover is the whole long-range facility yeah, right. planning. Mm -hmm. um, it's so easy to get short-term focused is, okay, this is in front of us, we need to do whatever we can to get the past this date, you know, get voter approval. <coughs> Without any conversation around what's coming around the event, and if we can demonstrate and model behavior in terms of talking about three, five, seven, ten, twenty years out, mm -hmm. um, hopefully that will engender some <coughs> trust in the public. Uh, but it's always a challenge. Uh, oftentimes, I've found almost always the public is fixated. What are they doing to me this year? You know, what does it mean mm -hmm. to my tax rate? It's kind of that bottom line mentality, and that's going to be a challenge for us to try to break that mindset. I think. See, Julie, you're lucky. on this table, though. Right. You're lucky. You've never been here long enough to remember, and it wasn't that long ago. We literally, as a council, would go through every page of the budget and every line item, and if there was a change significant to any particular individual's interest, even if it was calculators, they'd question it. Uh, the good old days. Well, I don't bring them back. <laughs> 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 Um, one of the things that I that drew me to Scarborough and that I appreciate about the work of Scarborough is the sense that there's one budget, one community, and we're working on the one vision piece of it. And so I like what you said about keeping our promises. I think that that's really important to the conversation as well. And in the school, as we're looking at this budget, we're really looking way out. We're saying, what do we, where do we need to go in the next five to seven years? And how do we make really smart strategic decisions mm -hmm. today that helps us get there at a way, at a pace that our community can support? Right. Because I don't think there's one single person in this community that doesn't support the work that we know we need to do. It's just we have the reality factor that we have to consider. So I like the idea of the one community, one vision, one budget, keeping our promise. Maybe that's our maybe that's our tagline. We should keep our promises. 
kind of hokey. It is, I know. Yeah. I like it though. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, but I think if the little lapels. For me, what this exercise really is all about is is building and maybe regaining trust in the public. Absolutely. What I would love to get to the point is that we all get the benefit of the doubt. When the school needs something or the town needs something, um, we get the benefit of the doubt from our taxpayers. They appreciate that it's been well thought out, and, and we've got some work to do to get to that point. But I think at the end of the day, that's what I would love to. Build is, is trust and goodwill. Um, Even yeah, if they don't understand an issue, they trust that we're right. I mean, you're all the elected officials that, that can make decisions on their behalf, but for the, the validation vote, of course. Um, and even that, for the validation vote, wouldn't it be nice to be in a place where the voters have confidence that by the time you've done your job, the budget's put in front of them, that they support it? That happened last year. It did. Yes, it did. One time is not a trend, though, Sean. I mean, we need to build on that. Keep it up. I'm going to take you. We're beginning of a trend. Beginning of a trend. So I think we're good then. It sounds like communication is kind of a work in progress. We'll get some feedback. Would you say three in March? I think absolutely. Yep. Great. So that brings us to discussion of anticipated budget drivers. And yeah. I will sort of turn this over to Tom and to Julie to, to lead the way. I'm assuming that, you know, it's obviously early in that process, but I think, again, for all of us just to hear. Yeah, you know, I'll speak for myself. I was not prepared to, to get into the substance of part of that. Right. I haven't even seen budgets from my department yet. I've been mm -hmm. a sense of some of them, but it's too premature to put them on the table. Um, I just think that was thinking back to last year and even the year before that, that was some productive use of this group's time uh, is to really focus on uh, those those budget drivers, whatever they may might be, and really spending some time. Two years ago, it was digging deep and understanding the laptop initiative. Last year, as I recall, from the school side, it was <coughs> investing in staff at the high school to improve the grade 11 test scores. <laughs> some such thing. Um, so whatever they may be, I think that's productive use of this time. And for that reason, I want to make sure it was on the agenda just to see if there was kind of agreement that that's Absolutely. good ground to cover at some point in the coming weeks. Yeah, and I think maybe two reasons on the agenda. One is if there's anything we know now, you know, is it helpful to tease that out so we then can schedule some, you know, to-do list for, for going forward. If I hear you right, Tom, at least on the municipal, municipal side, you may be saying there's nothing really on the landscape that, that's standing out. Nothing is scattering. <coughs> no. <coughs> and I don't know about the, the school side where there's anything that, that so I mean, there is the contracts. Yeah, we've got a union yeah. contract up for re renegotiation. Two contracts up for negotiation. Um, that's kind of the, the stuff we can't, well, we can control in a sense. But that's definitely coming down, bus drivers and support staff. But I think what I would share is that we are in the process of evaluating what our needs are and doing that strategic planning that I was talking about and really saying, you know, what kind of where do we want to go in, in accordance to our vision and our 24 month plan comes up on expiration. So we know strategic planning is going to be a really important factor. Um, and we want to do that really, really well because our goal is to, to write a longer range plan um, that can help the community see where That's we great. need to go to ensure that our students are really competitive um, for college, career, and life. Um, and so that's part of what we're doing. Another thing that we're doing on the school side is really looking closely at our personnel and thinking about how has the work shifted and do we have the right people in the right places based on the skills that they have and also the needs that um, the district has. And so the principals and the uh, directors are working really, really hard and closely together to make sure that we're having a K-12 perspective on our needs as a whole. So that's a work in progress and I would just think that it's important for the community to know how much time and effort has already gone into the budget process on the school side um, before we're making any decisions. We're kind of just putting everything on the table so that we can make a longer plan. Yeah. You know, the, the going back to communications, I think just putting out that piece that you are coming up with a long-range plan and you're doing that work now goes a long way to build that trust that Tom's talking about, that by the time we arrive at the budgets, Folks know that that's just being actively considered because that's one of the questions we get. That's, that's great. Yeah, you almost hope the budgets are kind of afterthoughts. It's where, you know, the planning's already been done for this year's budget. So, really looking at where we're going to be in three or five. 
you know, I mean, you get to the point where the budgets are just kind of like, yeah, we already know that. Where, where are we going? Where are we headed? Mm -hmm. um, 800 pound gorilla in the room. Anything from the state? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's an elephant. <laughs> I Something. think that <laughs> I don't use elephants anymore for obvious reasons. Sorry. No, no political Ouch. commentary. <laughs> um, the state is again uh, the governor's budget is looking at making adjustments to the EPS formula. I think that regardless of what specific tweaks are made, <coughs> the news for Scarborough will be the same um, because the same meaning will be we'll set to lose another bad. million. Or uh, it will <laughs> still be bad. Well, I mean, this, this will be same. Like we're not getting the same that we got last My year. My sense is that so unless the of pot of funding is increased, which is the current battle around the 3% and the, right. you know, mm -hmm. the uh, school funding increase, that Scarborough <coughs> is certainly not going to see an increase and probably see a decrease because they're going to be dividing the same pot or you know, a similar pot and they're going to be trying to achieve some equity with some of the less um, fortunate districts. So yes, I think that the we'll see we'll see a reduction. I would be grateful if we got the same money. Sure. Um, and I think one of the things that this team can review and articulate for the benefit of the public is the strategic planning that we did last year with the Wentworth funding and releasing some of that money that was intended for debt service in 2016, so that we now have a much larger fund balance to carry forward with a specific intent of cushioning any reduction in outside funding. Rough calculations um, for me last year, and I'll revise this and refine it a little bit, but um, I think if we lose another million bucks, we're at minimum receivership. Mm -hmm. That's, that's yeah, a good absolutely. question, yeah. because that's, you know, we were talking about that kind of soft landing which, which was part of the budget discussion last year about how long it's going to take <coughs> us to get the minimum receivership. And, yeah, and so know. we put a million bucks in the bank and hold well, but no, but it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> that, you know, there's a, there's a silver lining in every cloud, and the silver lining is that stabilizes our budget, right. for lack of a better... We don't um, have to contend with that volatility every Correct. year. Correct. I think that um, the, the statutory definition of minimum receivership is, is complex. It's basically a certain amount per pupil. Mm -hmm. That's just sort of the, the baseline, that's the minimum that the state can provide. And then there's some uh, further allocation for special education. There's some further allocations from, for some other little really specific things. So that last year when I did some rough calculations and checked in with the state, um, we were basically halfway there with the subsidy we were getting in 17. So and I, I think that we're still probably on that same pathway. Um, unless there is some radical change in the funding, the, the dollars available to distribute across all the districts in Maine, Scarborough is not going to see any bigger pieces of the pie anytime soon. So. And I think that's an important narrative to keep in front of us as well because that's that's certainly been a a <coughs> significant driver in the past. Yeah. Um, whether that continues to hold its significance, I guess it's, we'll see. But. I would just add a few things. Um, one, no matter what happens with 3%, we know we're not going to see anything in FY18. Right. Um, that's been really clearly communicated and you know whether or not it'll happen for FY19 is still a big question mark. Right. Um, so I think that's important for our community to know. Yeah. And also, and the, and will the you clarify the 3%? Because I don't know that. It's the question the, two, right? Right, the question two. Explain. The well, no. Just to every, well, and I know the public knows what you're talking sure. about with the three. So when we're talking about three percent, we're talking about question two, which um, what, what that did was say that anyone who earns over any anyone earning over two hundred thousand dollars would be taxed an additional three percent on the income that exceeds the two hundred thousand. So if you made, um, you know, two thousand or two hundred and Right. Like, so um, one. Yeah, I can't even use numbers right now, but then it would only be on that one hundred thousand that was over the right. you know, or that one thousand that was over the two hundred thousand rather. So, um, I think that that's important to think about. But again, it's you know, funding is still not at fifty five percent for education generally, so we do get a very small amount and um, it's it's at the point for us where we really just need to think about what is it you know, what is it that our schools need and that is really going to continue to become the responsibility of us at the local level. When you look at what the governor is proposing in a biennial budget, um, he's proposing that all system administration be locally funded. So for us, that's about a million dollars of our budget currently. Um, and
and when you look at how much money we're receiving from the state, if I'm right, Kate, it's about eight cents on the dollar this year. So, um, you know, it's more and more is going to be pushed back. There's also conversations about doing away with MLPI, which is the laptop initiative where currently we uh, partner with the state for our seventh and eighth grade students. And so that's also something that's going to have to be absorbed at the local level. Um, and as part of our strategic thinking, some other things that are coming um, with this, potentially with this biennial budget are um, increased class sizes and uh, ratios, student ratios. So the way the, uh, the state calculates that is really important and will be something that we'll want to define through this process so the community really understands when the state's talking ratios, they need this. When we're talking class size, that means something different. Um, that's an important clarification. And uh, so all of those things obviously are going to impact the way we utilize our personnel and um, the strategies that we put in place. But um, you know, there, there doesn't look like much relief coming for us. And I think that we just kind of have to accept that because it can be really distracting to keep going back to what we're not getting um, and focus on what our kids need and how do we ensure that they get that. So part of what we're doing is trying to look at some different creative funding options and thinking about um, how can we build partnerships that will help us do the things we know our students need. The one thing that I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm really confident will happen is that the state budget will not pass until we've already passed our budget. That's right. So yeah. that's, that's one thing just to be aware of. I'd like to act quickly depending on how that finally shakes out at the state level and uh, we may need to I attended a DOE update the last week and they were pretty clear that they wouldn't be sending any information in February this year. They were hoping no to get preliminary it out. Numbers. Nothing they would be sending. Yeah. And so um, they were hoping that maybe mid-March, maybe towards the end of March, but they weren't sure about that either. And that's just preliminary. That's not right. a final budget. Right. Not an active. Right. So, but I do think that needs to be a very core part of our narrative because as always we're, we're, in, the, we're in the predicting business now and that, that the, the challenge then becomes how conservative are we in that prediction? And that's really, I think, where a lot of stress and consternation comes in the community is are we being over conservative with assuming things or are we being too aggressive in, in how we predict things are going to be done? There's, you know, I mean, there's always that sweet spot in the middle. We just have to really, I think, over communicate why we're presenting what we're presenting why and what those drivers are. Yeah, and, you know, to Chris's point earlier, the <coughs> silver lining for me is that we're so close to minimum receivership now. I mean, if you look back in 2008, 2009, we were getting seven million from the state. Now we're down almost three million. We've already done a lot of the heavy lifting in this community, um, and it has sucked to use a technical accounting term. Um, but you know, we. Uh, it, it means that we've already done a lot of the heavy lifting right. and that, you know, in this past year we've been able to plan ahead and say, you know what, this is what it is, guys. We're right. we're kinda out on our own here and we need to plan for it and do what's right for Scarborough. And the positive side though is that we put in you know, instead of to I think to, to, to Julie's point of not communicating what we've lost, communicate that now we're stable. Uh, you know, and and, yeah. and and we're a little bit more predictable now. So, you know, stay on the positive side of things instead of saying, listen, we, we just got, you know, we got cut by the state again and we're down to this. And, you know, it's, it's, we have to justify making that up. No, we can, I, I think it's all, part of that is how we present that to, yep. to, to the community. I think if we say, look, you know, the bad, the bad thing is we've lost some revenue and some resources. The good thing is it's not catastrophic and it allows us to move forward being more stable and predictable. And, and then we can start looking at those incremental investments, where they're really going to go and what they're going to mean and why. And I think to Julie's point about being creative, finding other creative funding sources, you know, we've done shared services and other things, and I know the town is doing some shared services now and, you know, doing some other things, and I think that that helps to get that out there in the public as well, because maybe people don't understand that we share our food service director or that the town shares, you know, part of the, um, you know, um, so what do I want to call it? No, the, the dispatch and, and then part of the um, me mechanics, oh, sure. mechanics, yeah. you know, oh, right. maintenance right. over there. And so I think that people need to know that too. I mean, you see a blip every once in a while, like in the paper that mentions that, but, mm -hmm. you know, those are big cost savers for us. Mm -hmm. And people just think, oh, you're not saving and, money by doing that. Yeah, we are. Again, revenue, you guys are getting revenue. So. Yes. Because other towns do not. <coughs> We've been sharing some of those ideas with them. and. They are not at that level of sharing services like Scarborough does. 
And I think um, in our meeting with the legislators, you, Larissa spoke about being sort of active up there to keep us informed. Right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. Sean and I both sit on the Maine Municipal Association's Legislative Policy Committee, and there are a number of bills certainly um, circling around question two and how we, we are, so yes, it's on the book. It is now law. It was passed by, but that does not mean it can't be amended. Any law can be amended. So there will be a number of bills put forward this year to amend that law. Um, and to your kind of I think you kind of hit this as far as changing the formula, changing what's in there, taking out um, the administrative piece. One of the bills that we, one of the bills that the Maine Municipal Association is putting forward themselves um, is discussing how can we stop that? Like, where can we draw these lines? Like, stop redefining um, special services. Stop redefining like the race, the 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 number of is it one point one sh you know units that we count for a special needs child? Is it one point three for a foreign language speaking child? Like how to stop messing with that and stop reducing it further so that your fifty five percent is on a smaller and smaller and smaller plot. Mm -hmm. right. So yes, yeah, being active. So right. yeah. funding for teacher retirement. Right. 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 That switch two years ago. Absolutely. And they still have haven't hit fifty five. So being more active, like having Sean and I report back to you as the school board and to the town council, and if the, those council, if that council and board wish to be more aggressive with their state representation, that's of course their choice. But certainly communicating what's happening at the state level that truly is not poor management on the elected officials mm -hmm. and staff of the town. It's simply there's this is a state issue. I'm sure to add that also um, they're looking at recalculating the special education funding yes. formula, whatever yes. that means. But um, we know the costs are going up and up every year because the needs are increasing um, and the, the types of services that students need are, need are increasing. So that's also going to impact. So, Clarissa, I'm sorry. Are there, is there any um, collaboration between Maine Municipal Association, let's say MEA or Maine uh, you know, Principals Association or something in terms of this legislation at all? I have not heard that from MMA. Okay. But I, we have been meeting at the same time. with each other, you know, as friends, but that's yeah. about the because lobbying and the work is done separate. Maine School Management around. would be mm -hmm. MSMA. Yeah. yeah. That would probably be the one that. I'm sure they've got their... Yeah. Well, I, I know everybody kind of does their own thing, but it, it strikes me that, you know, even from the Maine Municipal Association, it, it's impacting all of the towns. Yeah, right. It's not just a separate... Education is not a separate issue when it comes to municipalities. We're not right. we're not completely divided. We, right. We're all integrated and symbiotic. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's any outreach or any coordination of activities saying it's not right for the... It, it's not... It's not the approach the main uh, MSMA wants to take, but you know they'll partner with MMA to say, listen, this is not good for anybody. You know, this is and kind of have a coordinated effort. Kind of I thing. can certainly ask about that um, okay. at next Thursday's meeting and report back to you on the ninth of next month. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I was wondering, Tom, if you've seen anything about revenue sharing for the town um, in the budget proposal. I haven't seen any details. The only thing they talked about is is. They've dropped it from what five percent that we normally get from about something you know, to do, and they're talking <coughs> about never bringing you back up to five. That's right. Historically, it was five. Uh, in the it's last five years, it went back to two, and it was supposed to go back to five. There's legislation pending to keep it at two. So we'll see no harm in the next year's budget because we're already we've adjusted downward. Right. Uh, and that is an issue that um, MMA LPC yeah. is also taking up in the committee that I'm on. It's a big, big issue. Um, I wanted to ask actually two things for on drivers and. and um, I don't know, they're not necessarily cost drivers, but it's um, their budget drivers. So first, I don't recall um, when we initially approved the laptop program for the one-to-one, -one, is this year three or year two? Because I was just wondering if we could get a status update on, because I know that there was a there was an investment that needed to come, I think, in year three. Mm -hmm. yes, so this would cost by this two? Two. Okay. With the high school, one, K2, and um, our February school board workshop, we'll be having a tech talk with Jen Lynn. She'll be giving a big update on that, and that's scheduled for February 16th. Yeah. I was just wondering if, so if I recall, in year three, there was a big driver because there was another reinvestment in the program just in that one-to-one -one piece, which was the high school. Right? I think that the, the timing for that, Sean, and I can go back and pull the, the pull information the for this team, but I, I think the timing on that was 
coordinate it so that when it was time for the high school to have its normal tech refresh yes, in our five-year yes. schedule, yes. our four-year schedule, four schedule, that it would right. be the high school year. Right. The big investment um, coincide. And that, that I couldn't remember. I just wanted to the normal tech, yes, that's right. Um, but yeah, I can make a note of that. No, you don't. It's not even relevant this year. It's okay. Um, I'll get what I think I need out of the uh, MLTI elimination discussion, I think, is what I really focused mm -hmm. on that path. The other piece that um, was a significant issue last year that needs to be at least uh, discussed is the fund balance and the strategy regarding the use of fund balance. So why don't we, I think that's obviously a topic on its own. Yes. So why don't I add that to... Um, yep. Subsection of budget drivers. Well, it's, it, I think it's a oh. subsection of revenue loss because, or revenue like stability, right, the because the know. use of fund balance in our world well, is typically in so order to offset. Yeah, so for purposes of, of uh, putting it on the agenda, it could be C or D, because it's a, it, is, it will be a budget driver as far as if it absorbs other yep. losses in other areas. So I think understanding not only to make sure everyone first is on page on where we are in the actual history regarding the issue, and then talking about the strategy, which is also about promises um, that we've kind of talked about going forward on its use. And I'm talking about primarily the uh, Wentworth Bond conversation that we had last year. But overall, I don't want to just segment that out, but it's overall fund balance strategy. Okay. Perfect. All right, so we're continuing on. We're at 320, time check. Yes. Um, <coughs> so budget forum. And details, I think um, maybe we'll keep this to our discussion on what we talked about and um, at our next meeting we can sort of firm up if, if you all have other ideas or ways to add to what we were talking about. But we obviously all agree that the budget forum should continue, but we talked about if there was a way to make it more um, attendee friendly. Being nice. <laughs> yes, so Peter makes a fabulous. Everything's better with cookies. But <laughs> we, about that. we talked about um, <coughs> the fact that there were maybe 21 people there last year, and a lot goes into producing that event. And so um, we thought maybe if there was a different format, and we threw around a couple ideas, and I think the one that sort of got some steam, but we wanted to bring it to the larger group, was um, there are two different ways we were talking about doing it, but it was breaking it into like-minded questions. So from 7 to 7.30, say, we were saying if the talk is about debt service, so people would know from 7 to 7.30, all the questions we received on that would be answered then. From 738, it would be about cost drivers. Or so we would break up the night because we felt like people were there for two hours and they were just waiting to hear their question answered. Sure. But they stood there for two hours before it got answered. Yeah. So if if we could sort of group the the questions together, people might be like more likely to come. I know as a parent, I can't just say, okay, I'm going out for two hours hoping my one question gets answered. So I think a lot of people either just stay home and watch it or don't bother and just read later. But if we could break it up so that people know, okay, what I am interested in is from 8 to 8.30. How do you how do you combat the, well, I'm not available from 8 to 8.30. I'm only okay. got, I, I've got a, you know, I've got a, a booster club well, meeting and I've got to be there, but I want my question answered anyway. So well, no, it would still it would still be pretty much the same format where we're sitting up, and but we're just sort of focusing on those questions from that time frame. So and what are you hoping to gain by that? What, what's the, what's um, the I would more like more attendance. I but won't you get attendance just spotty attendance because I'm only going to come here my question and leave? That's fine. Yeah. But. Uh, it, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Right. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, is it, uh, it's almost sometimes better, I, I think that one benefit of having that block of time is you may hear questions you hadn't thought of. And it's really kind of, I think the purpose of the budget forum was, was twofold. One, it was to get information out there in a coordinated and, and concise effort, but it was also a way to gain trust and be there to be available for the public to 
question us because in our process it's not always available, especially when they're at the, ca the, at the table and they're at the podium. And they send their three minutes and then this was kind of an opportunity to get that, try and get that give and take a little bit more. Well, I'm obviously not explaining it correctly. It, it was Thanks. about talking yeah. about what they wanted, what, what interested them. Exactly. About what interested us. Right. Well, right. And I, but I, I thought we had said that it would be pretty much the same format. It's just that huh. we're going to say, okay, Instead this time frame, yeah, we're focusing on these questions I, that we received. Trying to be more flexible and allow for more um, choice. Well, I think the other thing, I, uh, I mean, it's no different than taking the format. I mean, you literally can just take the format you have today, reorganize the right. questions so that they're consistent, and say from 7 to 7.30 is this. So I don't, I think it's a great idea. It's the not, other piece it's not changing it. <coughs> being more organized. Right. The other piece I was going to say is maybe uh, publishing the, um, it's, it's not interactive, but publishing the Q&A or the answers to those questions in advance of the actual meeting so that they're online so that we can have them and just reference it. So I guess my question is, questions that were the questions that were asked in advance by people, right. they were online available yeah, yeah, with the answers. I forgot that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so and it was only anything that was asked. What more can that you do? Night. Well, well I, guess, I think, I think I'd, I'd like to kind of bring the discussion back around to what's the purpose of this budget forum? Is it another opportunity for us to just communicate and do an information dump? Or is this an opportunity to engage in a discussion with the public and allow them like a Q&A kind of thing? I think when we started out, Tom, if I remember a few years ago, we were just like, let's just open the doors to all questions, whatever they want, we're just available. No format, no nothing. You just show up, ask any question you want, we're here to answer whatever you have. And we've kind of, you know, we're, now we're putting structure, which I don't, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, I, I think it's important for us to decide what we want to accomplish with this budget forum and not just I think check off in the process. My, my recollection, my thought was that it was an opportunity to make ourselves available to talk about what they want to talk about and right. consciously not have a bunch of talking heads providing PowerPoint presentations, me being one of them, uh, really just being up here and available. Right. Right. It's it, it, like you could accomplish both of those things, though. Yep. Um, you know, if if you still have the sort of freewheeling, ask your question, we'll respond approach, but if you are able to put a little bit of a label on it that you know, in this hour we're going to be focusing on this topic, maybe you do accomplish yeah. the same thing, and you do have and you, I, I you do lose the people coming and learning something they didn't think of. Well, yeah. they can still stay, they, we're not kicking anybody out. <laughs> people can still stay for the full two hours if, if so that's what they want to do. I think Mr. Ferguson did that. He took yeah. the, the questions and yeah. kind of lumped Chunked them. Chunked them. Each other, that's what the moderator But I don't think we ever yeah. said, okay, we're going to discuss the budget. Right. 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 So let me, let me throw this by by you guys and see what you think. What if we, um, um, you know, um, invested a little bit in having it, let's say, in the, in the Wentworth cafeteria and we had uh, Mr. Esposito do something and we had the, you know, remember we talked about, uh, when we first came on about what they do in Cape Elizabeth, where they had the, the seniors will come in and the, the spring section will be there playing and the, and the key club kids will come around and be serving the seniors and they put on a type of spread. What if we did something like that to try and pull, I mean, I'm not talking about a seven course meal, but you know, have some light snacks or something and you open it up and just to get a draw and say, hey, you know, have a little bite. It kind of almost like a community forum. Yeah. So come in, you know, have some, even as simple as you know, milk and cookies or whatever it is. And, 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 and have that welcoming to come in and say, listen, this isn't just, it's not just to talk to you. It's not just a bunch of talking heads giving you info. We really want to hear from you. We really want to engage with you. And, you know, let's, let's come and break some bread and talk about it, you know. Did we talk or was I dreaming this? Um, <laughs> there was some thought perhaps of doing it like you do your community dialogue, yeah. Yeah. where you're able to let those that come define the agenda, okay. and then you bring it off into, in, have an opportunity for much more in-depth conversation rather than a okay. standard response. Yeah. You know, 30 minutes, 30 we did, seconds, we did and move on. Yeah. 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 Well, just, just as kind of a process check, because probably some people have a hard stop at 3.30, yeah. I'm imagining. Yeah. I, I sure so, so I think these, these are meant to be topics for upcoming meetings. So okay. we can get to a little more detail. So I think we have suggested, Sean suggested adding a future topic would be some conversation on fund balance. Mm -hmm. And um, work that kind of falls under that. Work work that yeah, the whole, that, that yeah. conversation. And I think we also, you know, at some point we probably need to talk about budget targets as we get closer. So maybe the way to leave this is, you know, if folks have any other issues, just popcorn them out to us about if there's anything we should put on the list. And what we're trying to do is come up with the agenda for next time. So of these, can folks just kind of let us know which ones 
that they would like to talk about next? Sounds like the forum might be one of those. I would like to add that the, the state funding, at least a discussion on yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Okay. How we're going to address it. So, so maybe let us know that then. And so any ideas you have to add to the list, let us know. We'll try to build an agenda. At least I hear everybody say that the forum is one we have a lot of energy for. I do um, think we should reserve the auditorium for that date yeah. just to have it. Oh, it has been. Yeah, I believe it has, it has been. been. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll have to check with Colette. I know we went back and forth about oh. whether that was a... But I think she I think she decided she was going to do it. And okay. she would have reserved the high school. Mm -hmm. Right, which is fine. Let's at least just have that. Go with, go, with, go with the status quo yeah. until... Even, even if you put the out purpose room across and you just say, hey, come have, have some snacks for us and then let's go in and have a talk. Whatever, something. And then, so I think the last item was just a, a takeaway to do. I know we have one to do around communication, so we'll loop back on that. Both, I think, some feedback from you, and there'll be some feedback from whatever the town council first meeting of its communication piece will be. Um, any other takeaways and dues, folks? Anybody? For me, the tweet or the uh, <laughs> case uh, post might be the budget process has started, and you know, just get people kind of tuning in. We don't really have any substance to talk about, but. I can go to We're mid January and we're already yeah. the, you know, can, can, you can you send it to Larissa and Kelly so we can put it on the that's on the same message? Sure. Yeah. I think you know the best way to do it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank Both you. signals don't count. <laughs> so any other takeaways folks have? Uh, I personally was going to um, connect with Vicki Cow from MSMA to find out about any conversation that happens between MMA and MSMA so we can see if there is an, an opportunity for coordination there. Um, then also... And Elaine Thomas is here, Dale Douglas too. Okay. Those and um, then I was also going to make sure that when Jen presents on February 16th that she talks about the tech refresh schedule so it's really clear kind of where we are and what's coming down the pipe for everybody. Would there be any value, Peter, to um, going back to last year's promises, as Sean was saying, of you know the um, the strategy behind the one town, one budget concept? I think there was some really good language in the PowerPoint that you guys used hmm. um, at the budget forum, Jody and and Sean. Maybe we could just pull some of those slides and say, That's you know, do we want to revisit some of these talking points or, um, you know. Make sure that we're reflecting on what we said last year yeah. and, and continue yeah, that. Uh, so I'm flattered. Um, and I'll give Jody all the credit because she's. You know, <laughs> then you're not flattered. Um, but there, um, what I'm talking about is actually the promises are the ones that didn't make the slide. So last year when we talked about school funding, we talked about funding the high school teacher situation, and then with the understanding that this year would <laughs> be additional requests. So that wouldn't have been presented, I don't believe, as part of last year's Got budget it. Okay. because it was discussed here. I was thinking more of So that's what I'm kind of looking at yeah. as part of the promises because okay. we talked about kind of strategic goals or strategic ways of getting to those decisions and then putting to the side those other issues that we said, well, we can't do all of it at once and I want to make sure that we keep the promise and bring it at least to the table this year, Great. which I'm sure it's going to be part of the overall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Footnoted? Noted. Noted. Yeah. Footnoted as Ibit. Ibit. <laughs> Over and over again. Ibit. Julie, would it support your to-do for me to connect with MMA directly? And so that the MMA is hearing, hey, our superintendent's ch chatting with MSMA, yeah. so that they're expecting each other's phone calls, we'll kind of make a play date for them? Yeah. <laughs> Does that work for you? Okay. And I'll revise the calendar um, with our various notes and I'll share it with this team, but I'll also post it and share it around with those who need to know. And I'll work on securing a space for that March second <coughs> meeting. Okay. And I'll come oh, up with right. um, a couple slides and slide ideas for the TV and some yeah. Is that ready to go out? And, 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 and Jody, I did want to say, with Tom listening, um, I, I also want to make sure, sorry, then Larissa, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that the promises that we made on the municipal side are also shared because this, you know, um, this joint workshop isn't just about education in schools, it's about the one budget. So I want you to understand any promises that we did on that side because it impacts the total view of what we're looking at. We can't make Would you promise us? Still here, I promise you anything. 
I didn't think I've survived 15 years. I don't promise a darn thing. Oh. <laughs> Everybody moving on? We're good? If you have, yeah, if you have other, <laughs> other meeting agenda items, email us and we will add yep. them. And this will be a running list every agenda and we can keep adding. Um, the item six is public input. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? <laughs> Mike Jurek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Uh, same as last year when I talked to you, I appreciate you all doing this. But one thing I heard in this meeting today was about trust. And I have to be brutally honest, I don't trust you. And here's the reason why. George Whistle got this sculpture for the school and he's going to pay for it with bricks. The last I checked, those bricks weren't paying for that sculpture. Somewhere somebody paid for it. There's the school, schools need repair, schools need replacement. So does the fire building and the mm -hmm. police building. I see the chief of police standing in his office with a drain pipe coming down to a trash can. And this was in all the papers. It's a great emotional surge. We need to repair the building. We need to replace the building. One of the counselors said, I've been on the council now for six years, and this has always been part of the agenda, and we've never done it. What you needed to do was fire the guy who was supposed to repair the roof. <coughs> Don't come to me and ask me for more money. you got a huge gap to fill with trust. Mm -hmm. When you say, and Peter, I saw in your package there, and I emailed you this morning, uh, one of the goals is, our outcome goals, is to eliminate the citizens voting on the school budget. If 67% of the town said, we want to keep this, why make that one of your goals? Why try and silence the people that are voting. I don't understand, and believe me, you got a long way to go. I don't drink coffee at the expensive places. I go to one dollar McDonald's, and in there, what I hear is we have two school boards and no town council. That's my input. Good afternoon, my name is Bud Hanson. I live at 22 Stony Creek Drive, and in 13 years I'll be 100. I talk to you people all the time. One of the things I, if I listen to everything happened today, one word, communication. Everything resulted in communications. And as we all know, the large population in Scarborough are seniors. And I am one. And I think that we should do more communication with our seniors. Especially when it comes to the budget, especially when it comes to the town and the school. They are very active, as you know, with what we want to do with schools as far as the dollar goes. So keep it in your mind. Well, more communications. Talk about it. And I recall a few years ago, the school board saved $100,000 by doing something special with one of the schools. There wasn't a word in the newspaper they told anybody about this. What a great thing that told the taxpayer. We saved a hundred thousand dollars. That's unbelievable. So take advantage of it. Use communications. We have newspapers. We have you know, local papers. And people who deal with radio. So don't forget our seniors. We want to get you there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we turn, I want to sure that we assign a task who's going to do the agenda. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried. If that's Somebody a other than I need to plan. I don't know who's done it in the past. George essentially took the I think George wrote it up Kelly created it. Okay. Um, so 
Um, if you guys want to give me the bullet points, I can put it onto an agenda format. Okay. It might not be as pretty as Tom's, but I'll spell Sean's name right. <laughs> so you'll actually call him Sean Bevine. Okay. So Sean, you're on here, and Joanne will take care of it. Can I make a comment? Thank you. Again. Yes. No. Uh, we got a public comment. So I want to make sure it's very clear because this is being taped, and every citizen can hear it. So the task that was, uh, the goal that was referenced was last year's mm -hmm. goal because it was a referendum question. The town council goals, which is what that was part of, has not been set for this year. So I don't want citizens believing that they, we have some initiative out there to overturn what the citizens told us they wanted last year. Can you it's a misunderstanding of what is actually occurring on our agendas. You can't. That question appears, just an FYI for the public too, that question appears every, is it three years? Yes on the ballot. Required by law. Required by the state. And so it won't show up for two more years back on a ballot. So for the next two years, uh, everyone in the public who is 18 years of age or older uh, is able to come and vote on that once every three years. Does so this, for the next two years, everybody can still vote on the budget. And before we adjourn, does this raise a point of as these questions are asked, do we want to document them, record the responses, and post them all? Because if, if one person has the question, maybe similar to so other people do, and, and I mean, if that's part of the communication piece, right? It could have a running FAQ kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Correct. Good yeah. Idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, anything that comes up, so the question, to make sure we phrase the question properly, phrase the response, put it up there. If that elicits more questions, then so be it, but at least we keep that kind of running and get that out. Just a thought. I'm, I'm looking at blank face. No, 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 that's just a great topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't have access to the website, that's all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be something that we generate. Well, Tom got rid of the agenda, give it to him to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, we, if we jot down the three questions that, that, that came up in the course of the meeting, and we what our answers are, and at the end of the meeting, we append that to the agenda. Maybe that's an easy way to do it. It would also be we have careful to not create questions where there was only comment. So I did not hear any questions right. in our public comment section. I only I heard comment, yeah. and it was valid comment that should be absorbed. But I at no point heard a question that required a response. But I right. think so yeah. that that comment did elicit a response, so that. Not everybody else in the community is thinking the same but thing. But again, it could be an FAQ. We have yeah, it's yeah. not right. But FAQ. Once yeah. every three <laughs> years, yeah. the school budget comes up for a question on and that, and, uh, the ballot. Sorry for being this passive. It happened last night at the town council meeting regarding long range planning for the schools, in which a citizen got up and said that we're building a new uh, school system in response to uh, basically referring, inferring that it's a response to population growth and about our growth permits. Yeah. And absolutely, your long range plan has absolutely nothing to do with the I mean, uh, growth permits. Typically, the way that's done um, is a counselor or staff will respond to that not immediately following the comment, but right. when, when we have the floor, whether it's my yeah. manager's comments or counselor comments. That's typically the way you correct a factual. Well, we do try to do it better. I, I, opinion, I'm sorry, I'm just, you're going to give us the. Trying to rebut someone's opinion, and I think that's some dangerous territory. Frankly. No, it wasn't. I wasn't, and I agree with you 100. percent I know it's a, it's a slippery slope. I just want to, when we have statements that are, even if they're not questions, if they're not factual, some people can take that and build off of that. You, you know what I mean? I and it worked perfectly. Sean just responded on a factual uh, basis to one of the pieces of that comment. And if we're comfortable with that, that's fine. I, I just, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that... But, but if questions do come up, actually, it might be uh, good to take the questions yeah. and the answers and add them as a supplement to the overall queue questions that we do as part of a public forum. The budget forum. We can decide yeah. that moving forward, forward at the end of every meeting. Mm -hmm. if you want yeah. To say, do if we want questions up or not? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I'm sure we'll get emails. Okay. All right. Anything else? Adjourned. Okay. I'm on the